today we're going to discuss where the electrons are located in those electron probability clouds. Remember, Niels Bohr said they were in a defined ring, and then they could jump to different rings, but they always jump back down, right? But then Schrodinger, Heisenberg, they said, not really. It's in this probability cloud. We know based on their energy of the electron how close it is to the nucleus. Okay, and today we're going to be working on electron configurations. They're called SPD um, F orbitals. Have you ever, um, did we do any kind of notes on this? Not yet. Okay, good. All right, a couple of background things that you're going to need to know, such as um, the electrons are going to be located around the nucleus in orbital paths. They're in probability clouds, but we call them orbital paths because they kind of orbit the nucleus. They're always moving, right? And they're probability clouds because we don't know the exact location, but um, we know based on their energy how close they are to the nucleus, so the cloud region, right? They're located around the nucleus, and the electrons that are closest to the nucleus are going to have the lowest energy, all right? So when we do these things called electron configurations, what we're doing is we're writing this code, basically, to map out where the electrons are based on, like, the energy levels. Yep, the electro uh, electrons located, uh, sorry, that's supposed to be closest. Oh, right. Closest, I can actually edit that. The electrons that are located closest to the nucleus have the lowest amount of energy. Okay? All right. Here's some rules when we're actually um, filling in the orbital rings. And it will make sense what I mean as we go along. This is going to report, it's going to sound like a foreign language at first. But, you know, by the end of today, you're going to kind of get what I'm talking about. There are going to be rules for when you're filling in the electrons, right? Like if you had sodium that's number 11 on the periodic table, it's going to have 11 electrons. So if you look at your game board right here in your table, the first level has how many spots for electrons? Only two spots. And if I'm talking about sodium that has 11 electrons, we're going to have to go to the next level, right? So we fill the first two out of those 11 in the first level. How many total divots do you see in the second? Eight, so two and eight, that would be ten. I need one, I have one remaining, right? So where do I need to put that, that last one? In the third level. So that's what I mean about filling orbital rings. Because each probability cloud, can, you can find a certain amount of electrons in, that, in those clouds. Does that make sense? You're always going to fill that first level before you move to the next level. So that's exactly what I just talked about with our game board. You saw the little divots. You filled the first ring with two electrons, you had more than that, let's say, so you had to move to the next level. Always fill the first level before you move on to the next level. There is an exception, though, because nothing's always perfect in science. When you get to the fourth level and beyond the fourth level, it starts getting a little complicated. The electron um, probability clouds start to overlap, and um, it just isn't as clear, level and beyond. The next rule is, now this is going to sound kind of weird, but basically there's levels, and then within those levels there's sublevels. And that's actually um, noticed on your game board, because you see that the level 2 and the 3 and the 4, but you see that the little letters in between that, that's showing you that there's little sublevels within the major level. So I will, I'll give you a visual. Always fill the S sublevel first. So if you look at the different levels on your game board, do you see that every single level has the letter S involved? You can look whenever you need to, but they all have S. You always fill S. Then after you've filled all your S, you fill your P orbitals, then your D, then your F. Now, we're not going to get up to F. D will be like an extra credit question, and you'll understand what I mean when I show you some real live examples. The exception, of, of course, is when you get to the fourth level, the clouds start overlapping, and it gets a little funky. I got a good um, visual for you so you can kind of see what's going on. Once you get up to calcium, number 20, that's where you start seeing the overlap. Um, there will be questions up to calcium, okay? And then after that, it would be like an extra credit. But you're going to know how to do it, so I bet you you'll get the extra credit. Here's kind of how it's set up. You have your major level. You have your sublevel. We're going to make like a chart, small chart. And then you have 
maximum of electrons um, that can that can be in that level. Maximum amount of electrons. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a small little chart. Maximum of ele of electrons that can be held in that level. So we have level one. That's going to be closest to the nucleus. Okay. In the first level, there's one sublevel. You're going to see a pattern. And that sublevel's name is S. And the maximum electrons that S can hold is 2. And you see that on your game board. You see that major level 1, S is the sublevel, and only 2 electrons can fit there. All right. One is the major level number. So now let's go to the next probability cloud. Let's go to the second level. The second level has how many sublevels, do you think? Two. There's two sublevels, S and, anybody? P, good. S can hold how many? Two. And P can hold how many? Eight. Not eight. Six. With a total of how many? In the second level, eight. Total of eight electrons max. So if you look in your game board on the second level, you actually have eight divots that your electrons can fill. But you notice that there's one, there's two marbles that are kind of separated from the other six. Those are the ones in the S, and then these three and these three are the ones in the P. Let's move this. Up a little bit, let's go to the third <clears throat> the third level. How many sublevels does the third level have? Yes. Three. And what would we name those levels? S, P, and D. S can hold how many? Two. P can hold how many? Six. And D can hold ten. So how how many do you get total in the third level? Right. So the third level has a possibility of 18 max. And then it keeps getting, it, it just, you know, keeps multiplying, multiplying. Okay? So here's another, um, I'm going to show you another drawing. We get on here? All right, let's go to another drawing. Let's do this. You need a little bit of space. Basically, here's your nucleus. I'll give you a preview of what this is going to look like. It's going to be like something like this. Okay. Now I'm going to go back and erase that. Oops. Okay. So here's your nucleus, and these will be like your probability clouds. Here's level one. Level one has a, um, a possibility to hold two electrons in that S sublevel, so I'm going to call it a 1S because we're in the first level, because there's different S's. It depends on what major level you're in, remember? Uh, the line over it, I'm just going to say um, two electrons can be found here because we're in the S sublevel. I know it's weird at first. Just give it a second. Just give it some time. The second level looks like this. In the second level, you have two sublevels, S, P. This is a repeat of what I just showed you on the other slide, but this is more of a visual. How many fit in the S total? Two. So I can find about two electrons here. What about in the P? Six. So what's the total? Up. Uh, because we're in the second level. Because we're in the second major level. Total of how many in the second level? Eight. Now, this one's a little weird. And the reason why it's weird is because now we're going to kind of start overlapping with the fourth cloud. So I know it sounds a little abstract, but it'll make sense once you see this um, worksheet visual. So we're going to call this level three. And remember, S it has the lowest amount of energy. So we're going to put three S here. 
we're going to put 3P here. And watch my gap. I'm going to put 3D way up here on purpose because I'm going to actually take the fourth cloud and come right in between P and D. How many total can fill the S? Two. How many can fill the P? Six. And how many can fill the D? Ten. So I can, I can really have a total of 18. All right, here's where it gets a little funky. I'm going to take a different color. I'll take pink. I know. You, well, I'm not going to take up that much room. Here's the fourth level. The fourth cloud kind of comes right here. This is level four. This is where it starts overlapping. After this, it gets really complicated. So we're really kind of stopping right around here. 4S is right there. Because remember I said S has lower energy than P or D? Well, 4S has more energy than 3S. It also has more energy than 3P. So it's right in between. The D level has a lot of energy. So we're going to, it just works out that this cloud, the 4S, kind of um, occurs before the 3D. And I'm going to show you a method, a visual method on the periodic table that will help you figure it out really fast. But again, how many does the S hold? Two. So you can find two electrons right there. Here is what an electron configuration is. What, what does the word configuration mean to you? The arrange, arrangement, where it is, arrangement. Okay, to write an electron configuration, first we've got to start at the basics. What's the most basic element? What's the smallest element? Hydrogen. So we're going to write our electron configuration for hydrogen. Here's how we do it. We write the symbol. And then we put a colon. Okay. Now, for now, for right now, since we're beginners, we're going to give ourselves a little cheat sheet on the very far left. I'm going to, because we're new, I'm going to make these neutrally charged for today. Tomorrow we're going to make them ions, but today we're going to be neutrally charged. What does it mean to be neutrally charged again? Both of you are right. Okay. Excellent. Today's are neutrally charged. So if I say silicon, how many electrons would it be? 14. 14. If I say argon, how many electrons? Okay, so neutrally charged today. Tomorrow is going to be different. We're also going to give ourselves a cheat sheet by writing how many electrons we're actually doing the configuration for over on the left-hand side. Normally, you wouldn't write that down, but today we're new. So hydrogen is going to have only one electron in our configuration, right? Here's how we do it. This is going to be like the code that tells us where our electrons are. One electron, is it going to be way out in the 5S? It's going to be at the 1S, right? So one electron is going to be found in the first level. So this indicates um, the level. Okay. Then we're going to tell in the configuration what sublevel. So this is our sublevel. And then we're going to put a little baby number, a superscript, subscripts on the bottom, superscripts on top. We're going to put a little superscript telling us how many electrons are going to be found in that sublevel S. And we only want one, so this is going to be number of electrons. So my final answer will look like this. H colon 1s1. That's an electron configuration. Okay, so let's, um, let's jump up a step. Let's do something. So just so you know, helium with two electrons would be 1s2. Let's get a little bit more complicated. Let's do one in the second level, the second period. Let's do beryllium. Okay, so here's beryllium. Neutrally charged. How many electrons does beryllium have? Four. So again, today only we're going to write ourselves a note over here, but we don't usually do that. So we write the symbol, we put our colons, and let's start writing these electrons. Where are we going to find the first two? 1s2. That tells me how many electrons, that little number is going to tell me how many electrons are in the s sublevel. Then we're going to put a comma. 
because we have more than two electrons. We have two remaining, right? Where are they going to be? They're going to be in the two, the second main level. In what sublevel? You can't go to P until you hit the S. S. And how many more do we need to put in? Two more. And you know how I can correct myself on a test? I just count these little numbers. If I count those numbers and they add up to four, and I'm doing beryllium and I need a four, then I got it right. All right, so here it is. Here it is. Yes, this will be on the quiz, along with the ion chart. Let's do another one. Let's do oxygen. How many electrons am I talking about with oxygen? So Claire, this is you. <clears throat> so on your note card for your atom model, this is what you're going to have. This is called longhand. There's also a shorthand, but you've got to learn the longhand first. So we're talking about eight electrons. All right, help me out. Where's the first two, Danielle? Where, is it? Where are always the first two? One, S, and how many are in there? Two. There's two out of my eight. I need six more. Can I fit any more in the first level? Bump to the second level. Two, S, how many fit in the S? Two. That's only four. How many remaining do I have? I have four or more. Comma, two, I'm still in the second main level. P, how many left? Eight minus four is four. I have four remaining, so there we go. So two plus two is four plus four is eight. Let's go on. I told you that you're going to like these. They're easy. Let's go on. Let's do sodium. Sodium's number 11. So 11 electrons. You don't even need to write that anymore because I think you're a pro now. All right, I'm going to give you a chance to do this. Don't say it out loud. Then I'm going to come around, see what you have. Do you want me to give you a hint? What period is sodium in? What period is sodium in? What row is sodium in? The third. So you're going to end your configuration in the level three. The end of your configuration will have a 3 in it. And which, which side of the periodic table is it on? Left or right? Sodium. It's in the left side. That's the S block. So your configuration, we know already, is going to end in a 3 and is going to end in an S because it's on, in the S block. And I'm going to show you a visual once we finish this one. Do you think you got it? Sodium? There it is, 1S, 2, 2S, 2, 2P6, 3S1. Check this out. Let's do, <laughs> let's do, no, you're right after this. Let's jump ahead to sulfur. Sulfur, long hand for sulfur, neutrally charged. Kelly wrote the correct configuration.